In this video, let's talk about what we call the basic functions. These are the successor function, the constant zero function, and the projection function. And these three functions form the basis of the primitive and partial recursive functions. So let's start with the basic function, the successor function. This is the function that we give it a number, let's say three, and it gives us back the next number along, so four in this example. Uh, let's give it zero and it will give us the number one. So uh, the successor of x is x plus one. Simple enough. Now the domain that successor is operating on is actually the natural numbers. Uh, now the natural numbers are the set of integers zero or greater. And I'll write that out here. And the codomain over here is the same. It's also natural numbers. Now you may ask why we're restricting ourselves to zero or greater, why we're using natural numbers, why we're not using uh, the integers. Well, the reason for that is just this is how we define the basic functions in uh, the primitive recursive set of functions. So we don't consider negative numbers ever in the set of primitive recursive functions, so we use the natural numbers. So we can write out successor is a function from natural numbers to natural numbers. Notice also that it's a total function because the successor of any natural number, that is any natural number x, x plus 1, is defined and is another natural number. So this is a total function. Cool, so let's quickly just look at some examples of this um, in written form rather than uh, in box form. So let's do successor of 3 equals 4, successor of 5 equals 6, etc, etc. Um, cool, you get the idea. Let's move on to the constant zero function. This function is a bit more interesting. So the zero function is a function from vectors of n natural numbers to a single natural number. So that means that it takes a list of inputs, so x1 and x2, etc., up to xn. So this is a list of n natural numbers here. And I feed that to zero. And the zero function is always going to give me zero in response. That's why we call it the constant zero function. Now this n is to denote the fact that actually this isn't a single function. This is a kind of this is a family of functions. So for some concrete examples of the zero function, we could have uh, zero with n equals one, and this is the function that takes one element and returns zero. So I can give this uh, an argument three, for example, and that will give me that back zero. We can do zero with three arguments and give it three arguments and of course it will give us back zero again. We can even have zero with zero arguments uh, and that will still give us back zero. Um, now n does have to be greater than or equal to zero. Um, you can't have you can't have for example zero of minus one because uh, you can't give you can't give it minus one elements right that's not possible. But other than that n can be anything you want. So now let's take a look at the projection function. So notice this also has an n parameter and also has an i parameter. So the projection function with parameters n and i is a function from vectors of n natural numbers to a single natural number. And what does it do? Well, I'm going to give it n natural numbers here, x1 up to xn. And in return, it's going to give me xi. So that is the ith element of this vector over here. For example, if I gave, um, if I had, let's do proj 3, 2. And I can give that, let's say, 4, 5, 6. And in return, it's going to give me the second element, which is of course 5, so it'll give me 5 out. Let's look at some written examples of this. So proj of 2, 2, 
and we give it some inputs, one and three, and it's going to give us the second input of this two element vector, so that is of course three. Uh, a notable example is proj11, where we give it any x and it will give us x in return. So this is what we might call an, an identity function. And this turns out to be pretty handy when we're trying to construct our primitive and partial recursive functions from these base functions. So notice again that this is a total function because any list of n natural numbers has an ith natural number that we can give as an output subject to a couple constraints. So these parameters n has to be greater than zero obviously because you can't project out an element if you don't give it any elements in. Uh, and i of course also has to be greater than zero and has to be less than or equal to n. So you can't project the, the fourth element of a three element vector for example. So for any n and i which meet this criteria this is a total function on this domain because we can pick out the ith element of this um, n element input. Cool, so that's all I have to say about the basic functions.